a quick recap of our arguments on the Argand diagram. So we start off at the horizontal, the real axis, and we tend to work in an anti-clockwise form around this direction here towards 2 pi. So for example, if we have a complex number here, the argument of that complex number will be the argument it makes from the horizontal until we reach there, which is half of 2 pi, which is simply pi. Similarly, we could also go the other way, but it will of course be negative. So if we were to go this way, the argument would be negative pi. They are the same thing. Okay, so let's have a look at this example here. So here we have the polynomial as a function of z. Oops. Polynomial as a function of z. Uh, z to the power of 4 plus 4. So just looking at this polynomial equation, we can see that it is a real polynomial equation because its coefficients, so the coefficient of z4 is just positive 1. That's a real number. And then the only other ones we have was 0. And so 0 z cubed, 0 z squared, 0 z. They are, of course, real numbers. Our last one is just the constant term here, which is positive 4, which is a real number. So this is a real polynomial. It is of order to the 4. That's our highest order term, which means it will have four roots. Um, we can see on the left here that all our roots will be complex. And by the fundamental theorem of algebra, they will be complex conjugates of each other. So for example, this one here, Z1, you can see its complex conjugate, Z2, where Z1 is equal to 1 plus I, because it is 1 here along the real and one in the i, in the imaginary. Its complex conjugate is one in the real and then negative one in the imaginaries. So that's one take i. And similarly, its last two roots is negative one along the real axis and positive one in the imaginary. So its third root would be minus one plus i, and its fourth root will be the complex conjugate of that one, which is negative 1 in the real axis and negative 1 in the imaginary axis, so that is negative 1 take i. And they are the four roots of this polynomial. Now let's look at the argument that each z, so the four roots of this we can call z1, z2, actually no, let's not do that one. That can be z2, that is the complex conjugate of z1. Let's not want to do a 2. z3 and z4. Now the argument that Z1 makes is the angle here that it makes with the real axis going anti-clockwise. Now we can see that that angle there, that argument there, is equal to pi on 4. So we can write the argument of Z1 is equal to pi on 4. And what about the argument of, for example, Z3? Well, we know that these four roots here are complex conjugates of each other and by nth roots of unity that we worked out earlier they will all be the same argument away from each other so let's quickly work out the argument of z2 now we are going downwards we, we there's two ways we can work this out we can go in the opposite direction from the horizontal of real axis 
that means that we are going in a negative direction. Because it is the complex conjugate of Z1, that is just negative pi on 4. If we want to look at the argument between two of our complex roots here, so let's say from Z2 to Z1, it's similar to what we did when um, we subtract two vectors. We simply look at the distance between them. So we can look at argument of Z1, take argument of Z2. which will be pi on 4 take away minus pi on 4, which is equal to pi on 2. So we can draw on our diagram that the argument between Z2 and Z1 is pi on 2. And from our nth roots of unity, this is true for the argument between all of our complex roots on 2, pi on 2, and pi on 2. Another simple way of working this out is to know that to go from the beginning, so to go from the horizontal of real axis all the way around is 2 pi radians. Because there are four roots, we can simply say that the argument between them all will be 2 pi divided by 4, which is equal to pi on 2. And that is the argument between all of our complex roots.